Mother of all data rates. <laughs> Just a little reminder as I tapawing my data rate that if you're going to be heading on out to be doing any tapawing today, please bring your own containers. The hawkers are saying that they don't have enough of the containers and it's not good for the environment as well, okay? So bring your own containers. A little reminder to tapaw. Bring containers when you tapaw. Okay, going to have another sip of my data rate. Okay, so... Hello, welcome, welcome. My name is Yasmin and we're broadcasting live from the Class 95 studio. I hope you're doing good. Guess what? It's almost Friday. Woohoo! Do a little jiggy dance. Come on, come on. Jiggy dance, jiggy dance, jiggy dance, jiggy dance. My jiggy dance is a bit unglamorous, right? Mm. Okay, so something I want to share with you. Um, at MediaCorp, we're trying to raise funds for what we call the MediaCorp Enable Fund. So I think each and every one of us, because of COVID-19, we're each in our own way. We have been infected. Uh, we have been affected, not infected. We have been affected. However, some people are more affected than others. People with disabilities and their caregivers. Um, for example, they're unable to access rehabilitation and care services when non-essential um, services were suspended. They're also facing challenges due to mobility issues of getting food and essential items. So the MediaCorp and Able Fund, we're trying to raise funds to cater specific and um, uh, customized support to meet the needs of 2,000 persons with disabilities. Now, this includes cooked food, assistance funds, uh, respite care, as well as essentials distribution. And we really hope that you will contribute to this, even if it's like $5. Can you imagine if everybody just donates $5? How much can we achieve to help persons with disabilities? It's easy for us, like today, you decide, oh, I want to go out here to dump out this food. Oh, I've run out of flour and I want to go bake something. We can go out and do that, but they don't need, they, it's difficult for them to do so. So let's help the more vulnerable in our society. So here's what you need to do. Log on to giving.sg, the website, and we are there. Just search MediaCorp and Able Fund. You will find the page and really, really, we really hope you donate generously. We're looking to raise 500000 And if you have, thank you. All right, let's get to our... Jesse's Poll of the Day. Now you see me, now you don't. Okay, we're talking about new clothes. Isn't it great when you buy new clothes? I love it, the smell of new clothes. You try them on, you feel fabulous. But when it comes to new clothes, before you wear them, like after you purchase them, would you wash them? Because, well, you don't know where they've been. Or do you think, no, no need, just put them on because... They're new. It's a new piece. Why do you need to wash them? That's the whole idea of the word new. Vote now, okay? Facebook.com slash Class95FM. Ta-da! Also on our Instagram stories, we're at Class95FM. And share the reason why. Jesse's poll of the day. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on air um, in just a bit. And I'll chat with you more, okay? Break with Yasmin Chen. Hello, hello. It's almost Friday. Yay! <laughs> Coming up in this hour, some Dua Lipa, a bit of B.O.B. and Bruno Mars. No doubt, Jason Mraz. I've got a bit of trivia about Jason Mraz as well. But first, The Fray with How to Save a Life. The best mix of music. This is... Plus 95. Okay, now it's time for a little reminder of how to do your greetings. We've got a vigorous hello today. Now, if you have a message for somebody or you want to share with me something that happened to you recently, some thoughts you have, I would love to hear from you. Drop us a message on 9125-9500 on WhatsApp, okay? Hello from the other side. Let's learn not to shake too vigorously or else my hair, which is held on by just a tiny clip, is going to fall off. Okay, so a little bit of a hashtag video. Um, you know, we always get to meet some wonderful people uh, that, that travel and come into Singapore, not just singer, songwriters, but also comedian. Have you ever heard of Russell Peters? He is an amazing stand-up comic, and he's been here a couple of times at every single time sold out concerts, like sold out, sold out, not concerts, sold out shows. And I had a little chat with him, with Russell Peters. Here we go. So Singaporeans love you. Singaporeans are very good to me. And... 
You've been here so many times. How do you feel about us? And what have you sort of um, seen or some habits that you've seen about us? Have you? Well, what I love about you is I feel like I'm one of you. It's not like other places where you have like uh, Chinese people and Indian people and they're s segregated. It's everybody's very much together over yeah. here. I love the local food. I love going to Newton Circus. This is really gross, but one time went to Newton Circus, yeah. and we had the uh, Stingray and everything, and it was fantastic. Oh, I love the Stingray. But then the next morning, we were flying out, oh, and yeah. it was, I was on the flight back, and uh, the Spices decided yeah. to make uh, uh, Hello? an appearance. Yeah, right. a little appearance. Ring of fire. Uh, oh, yeah, well, it was a, more of a ring of terror. It was, uh, <laughs> uh, I let one go on the plane in my sleep, and it woke me up. Now, when it comes to your material, I understand you write everything yourself. You've got no script writer, you don't, it's just you. Just me. So how do you find the inspiration for it? I actually don't physically write anything down. It's my 29th year of stand-up, and I, I think I stopped writing things down about 25 years ago. What do you do? Do you sit there and watch No, people? I just, you know, I get on stage. More, it's more I get on stage and I talk. And then as things are coming out of my mouth, I go, oh, that's good, say that. Oh, that's good, I can do that again. Oh, that got a good reaction. But you're like the master of cultural lampoon. Lampoon, I think I met her last time I was here. Mm, yeah. yeah, and so, so how do you know these cultural lampoons unless you sit down? and really watch them unless they're stereotypes. Well, it starts off as stereotypes, and stereotypes are usually really broad strokes. Yep. I like to get more detailed when I talk about exactly, people. Exactly, the small, intricate it's bits. It's the small, intricate things. People connect. That, yes, that's why people don't get offended, because they see that you actually understand yep. them. That it is You're true. not just mocking them, you're, and you're doing something that they thought only they knew they did. So what do you do to relax when you're on tour? Because it's, it's a very long stretch. I train jujitsu now, and I uh, like Maybe? to find gyms. Yeah, right. I'm, a, I'm a blue belt now, actually. Yep, none of that. No, okay. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I do that. I, that's more likely when I go to the restroom. That's what you hear. <laughs> right after Newton Circus. I didn't remember even that. <laughs> the biggest misconception about you. I think I've heard people say that they thought I was going to be arrogant or something. And really? Like I'm the most approachable. I will give you time. So when I meet people, you know, and they, they or people are like, oh, this must be annoying taking a picture. I go, no. You know, it'd be annoying when nobody wants my picture. How about misconception? The biggest misconception about comedians. I think the biggest misconception is that we're depressed, dark, lonely people. We're really, really? not. Here's what you got understand we do what we do because we love what we do we we don't work for anybody yeah so you can't be unhappy then what are the most famous acts is the one that your dad threatens you with somebody's gonna get the hurt real bad yes now that you have a daughter right do you feel like you're gonna say that to her no here's what the problem is with this yeah. My daughter is exactly like me. When she does something, yeah. I actually laugh because I'm like, that's what I would have done. <laughs> and I know like she, what? Like what? She's like me. She's kind of cheeky and kind of, you know, it's not in a bad place. It's right. just kind of, she just wants to see how, how much to push her buttons. Nice. And I've never yelled at her because I, we don't have that kind of relationship. We have very, a very loving daddy-daughter relationship. Food. Uh, I love Italian food. And if I was stuck on an island and all I could eat for the rest of my life was pizza, I'd probably be stuck on an island eating pizza. Favorite drink? I drink scotch, so I guess Glen Morangi 18 or Glen Livet 18. Ooh, whiskey man. Pet peeve. Bathroom fans. What do you mean? Like, I can hear a fan right now. The sound of a bathroom fan drives me mental. Favorite person right now? Uh, you, obviously. Uh, favorite movie of all time? I have a few, but I would say one of them is definitely Midnight Run with uh, Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro. One thing that you haven't accomplished but you would like to do so. And I guess this is about a 10 to 15 year goal. Right. It's to get my black belt in jujitsu. One thing that you're really bad at. Texting back, calling back, emailing back. What hidden talent that we don't know about? DJing is my hidden <laughs> talent. And chicka, chicka, chicka. Hit. Do you have a mantra in life? I'd rather live a life of oh well than a life of what if. Your favorite comedian right now? Patrice O'Neill would definitely be my favorite comedian of my generation. And he was also a good friend of mine, but unfortunately he passed away a few years ago. He was amazing. He's highly offensive, but really funny. Do you have anything to say to all your fans out there? Hey, guys. <laughs> Class 95. Digital. I love Russell Peters, so promise me, okay, when he comes down to town again to Singapore, if, if you can get the ticket... Go and catch his show. But he's so serious about jujitsu. I didn't, it's not in the video that after I spoke with him, he was asking me like, Hey, where can I go for a little bout of jujitsu? I'm like, what here in Singapore? But aren't you going to do a show? And you know, he said, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I managed to get him a location and whatnot. And he just went down. He went down and did the whoa ha ha thing. And that's how serious he is about jujitsu. But when you look at him, you, you can't really imagine that, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get to our Jesse's poll of the day.
My jujitsu moves. Actually, it's got nothing to do with that. Okay, we're talking about washing or not washing clothes after you buy them before you wear them. Which team are you on? You got to weigh in so that we can get a feel of um, which inclination our viewers and our listeners sort of lean towards. Now, team, wash your clothes. Wash your new clothes before you wear them. It's from Boop. It says, because the outside world is full of germs and bacteria, which is harmful to me. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of germs and bacteria everywhere and... I kind of think we live with it, right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, Joseph says, Team, don't need to wash new clothes before you wa- uh, wear them. I love the smell of new fabric. It smells new and it feels good. Okay, Angela. Is that Angelize? Is that your name? Angelize? It says, uh, Team, wash clothes, wash new clothes before wearing. Because my both my parents were tailors before retirement and I've been to their factory very dusty. Partly also because I have sensitive skin, so it would be best if we wash new clothes before wearing them. I think Angela is right. She knows something. So maybe we should all do it. Fen Ming says, Team, no need to wash new clothes before wearing it. I love the smell of new clothes. The colours are still so bright. And after you wash, the colours are not so bright anymore. It doesn't look new. But of course, ask for a new piece from the salesperson. Okay. Um, we're going to get more to your messages but please weigh in. Will it be team wash new clothes before you wear them or team no need to wash new clothes before you wear them? Vote now, facebook.com slash class95fm. Also on our Instagram stories. I'm not going to tell you which team I'm on because I know you're going to vote against me. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to go on air and I've got a great recommendation for ramen for you. Bye. Class 95, a bit of Dua Lipa with Break My Heart. It's Yazzie with you. Hello. It's almost Friday. Coming up, some Jason Mraz with Have It All. It's a great song. It's so positive and so feel good as well. I got some trivia about that song for you. Stay tuned, stay tuned. But in the meantime, shall we talk about food? Shall we? Yes. Class 95's Nom Nom News with Yasmin. So, ramen news. Uh, Michelin star ramen uh, Sita, you know, they're doing one for one for their deliveries. And Ipudo, famous for around the world with more than 200 restaurants worldwide, um, open to much fanfare here in Singapore. Now, today they have seven outlets. By the way, the Marina Bay Sands outlet is temporarily closed. Okay, just so you know. Um, they're now opening for takeaways, of course, and now also island wide delivery. You can enjoy Ipudo's six. Signature Hakata style tonkotsu broth with thin ramen noodles. Uh, they also have some buns and donburi sets and donburi bowls as well. So they're offering some pretty value for money delivery combo meals as well. For example, $21, it gets you a choice of one ramen. Then you've got three pieces each of the gyoza and the tori karage. Mm-hmm. Then you can also top up a dollar for a drink. Now, the $40 sets give you exactly the same thing, except that you get two bowls of ramen instead. Now, there's also a bun set where for 12 bucks you get three buns and a drink. Now, the ramen comes in three hearty flavors. You've got shirumaru moto aji, which is a creamy tonkotsu broth. If you want something spicier, they have the akamaru shinaji, which is the tonkotsu broth enhanced with a very special blended uh, miso paste and some fragrant garlic oil. And honestly, who doesn't like some garlic oil in there, right? Also, the karaka men, uh, same broth blended with some spices. You've got the spicy miso paste and Sichuan peppers. So I think it's going to be a bit like the mala broth. Now, for island-wide delivery, there is a minimum order of $50. Delivery charge are 7 and $10 depending on distance. It's available daily from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So where do you go to order? Log on to ipudo.odl.me. That's ipudo, ipu, ipudo. What's on my mouth today? Uh? I-P-P-U-D-O dot odl, which is O-D-D-L-E dot me. Class 95's Nom Nom News with Yasmin. Okay, more food. Okay, now it's time for our Class 95's Foodies Choice, which is our Food Awards based on our listeners' nominations and votes. And today we feature the winning stall for Best Bakut Day. Check it out. Kyung, 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 kyung. It's the Battle of the Bakut Days this week for Class 95's Foodies Choice. Hi, I'm Yasmin, and we are on the hunt to find the best Bakut Day as nominated and voted by our listeners. We're here at New Bridge Road, so let's go find it. Ta-da! Winner 
time for best bakute goes to Songfa Bakute. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. Let's go speak to the owner. With me, I've got the second generation owner of Songfa Bakute, and her name is Diana. Hello. Hello. Okay, first question. Why is Songfa Bakute called Songfa? Song is actually my father's last name, Song, and then um, Fa means prosperous in Chinese. Ah. Uh, I get it because I know so far it's been around quite a long time. Tell us the history of your Baku Day. Okay, I think this year is a very significant year because it marks our 50th anniversary. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. Yay! When he was 19, he was working in a coffee shop selling all kinds of dishes, and Baku Day was one of them. Right. Mm. So he started off cooking Baku Day at the store, or what? He started off from a push cart at Johor Road, which doesn't exist anymore. Huh? Oh, okay. After that, when my, my brother took over, we decided to venture out from the restaurant town, which is here, yeah. in 2007. Okay, what makes your Baku Day so delicious? We are very much a Teochew style with clear peppery broth using Sarawak white pepper, which is one of the best peppers. And also, with the hours of boiling, the garlic and the pepper infuse into the broth. It complements very well into a clear peppery soup that's very nice to the palate and gives you a punch. We serve all kinds of meat, normal pork rib, which we have improvised also to cater to the younger generations with less fats. If you are a real Bakute lover, you would like the premium loin ribs. We also have the newly introduced spare ribs, which is a must-have because I think it's a good complement of the amount of collagen and the right amount of texture. Oh, I'm salivating. Okay, so how many outlets do you currently have? We have 10 and then recently we opened our newest outlet at the iconic Jewel Changi Airport. Because uh, the one at Newbridge Road, every time I drive by, there's always a long queue. When is the best time to come to avoid the queue? Generally during the weekdays, 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning is the best time. And off peak hours, 3 to 4 p.m. is also the good time to come. During the peak hours, what is the waiting time like? We don't keep customers waiting for too long, so between 10 to 15 minutes. Alrighty. Well, I would love to try some bak good day. And can I try the spare ribs, the one you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. So when you eat baku te, you must have tea because te means tea. So baku got no tea, doesn't work. Okay, so we've got the three cuts of meat here. This is the pork ribs. Then we have the prime spare ribs and the premium loin. Look at that. That looks good. Okay, let's taste the soup first. Oh, we can smell that it's peppery. Oh, it's very thick. Mmm. There's so much meat, I don't know which one to go for now. Jang, jang, jang. Mmm. It's so soft. Congratulations. Thank you. Our listeners have voted Songfa Bakute as the best Bakute in Singapore. Thank you, thank you. for some Bakute. Well, actually, uh, this was uh, last year, so they now have 11 outlets. Unfortunately, only five of them are open right now. And they're offering 20% off if you head down uh, for takeaways. It's 20% off. Um, they've also been on the Mission and Bib Goman for the last four years, by the way. So award-winning Bakute. Also our Foodies Choice winner for Bakute. So the 20% discount for walk-ins for takeaway, uh, takeaways. They're also delivering uh, island-wide and they have their own in-house delivery delivery options. Um, it is a minimum order of $30 and a flat delivery fee of $3. And they've also come up with some additional bento sets that you can order for delivery. For all the details, log on to songfa.com.sg. Alrighty, it is now time for news from around the world. What in the world with Yasmin Chang on Class 95. What? Strange but true news from around the world. This is news from China. So it's all about breakups. You know, breakups are hard, especially when one party cheated. Then it's like, ha, ha, ha. very seldom is the whole amicable breakup, right? So the cheating type is always very distressing. And sometimes I can imagine people want revenge. So this woman in Shandong, she was in love with a boyfriend and she was so looking forward to 520 day, which by the way was yesterday, uh, 20th of May. It's kind of like a Chinese Valentine's Day and she's looking for it. Uh, forward to that but just a couple of days before that I don't know why but she was looking at her boyfriend's phone then she saw that he's been texting some other women and then she realized that oh, he's been cheating on her oh dear so she was very heartbroken she was totally upset as you can imagine and she broke up with him she cried oh, 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 for three days and then she hears from their common friends that he's been like do 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 you know enjoying himself outside so he wasn't distressed at all and then she thought that's it revenge so what did she do 
she decided to send to his house about a thousand kilograms of onions. <laughs> Look at that! It's really proof! You see the boyfriend's on the right picture, right? He's like, what is going on? So she also requested to leave a little note, which is, you made me cry for three days, now it's your turn. Now, the poor delivery guy had to carry bag by bag all the way up to the apartment. Uh, it took him about five to six hours, and in the end, the delivery man said, look, if he doesn't cry... I will. So this woman in China, as revenge for the boyfriend who cheated on her and they broke up, she sent 1,000, about 1,000 kilograms of onions to his house. What in the world with Yasmin Cheng on Class 95. You know, if I was the boyfriend, once you receive it, it's like, what? But then he could sell it and he could make money, actually. I think she should send it and then take it back and resell it. Don't let him make money. Mm? Okay, let's uh, do your greetings now. Hello from the other side. Hello, hello, all your greetings. Say hi, don't be shy. Want to say hi to S. Hello, S. I want to take this opportunity to say that I work in a vet clinic at Ang Mo Kyo and I want to thank my colleagues and team A uh, and the rest of the teams for the great teamwork during this uh, COVID-19 times and also for the understanding pet owners for all their love for their pets and the patients. So please continue to love your pets and we'll be here to help your pets if need arises. And also... Uh, Mm, vet services are also pretty neglected when it comes to frontline heroes. Cheers to all the wonderful vets and nurses, and I love what I'm doing. You know what? Applause for all the vets and all the vet nurses as well. <laughs> Three rounds, four rounds, five rounds of applause. Thank you for doing all that you do, you know, to ensure that our pets stay healthy and safe as well, because our pets bring out so much joy for us, isn't it? So thank you for all that you do. I uh, want to say hi to Elizabeth. It says, a big shout out to my son, Chris Young, because today is his birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. For a minute, I paused because I was wondering whether I should do uh, the, 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 the not so good birthday songs. <laughs> Uh, Don, hello, it says to all my lecturers and classmates who are dealing with this arduous, ooh, big word, uh, period of circuit breaker and hope all is well with him. Maya, hey girl, it says, can you say hello to my husband? Wow, full name, huh? Javier Tan Moa Kuang. Hello, Javier Tan. He, uh, it says, he absolutely adores you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for always tuning in. Hot for you. Um, Cindy says a hello to Shu Min and Sam Jia Yu for their final online exams for their studies at University uh, College London. Jia Yu, Jia Yu, Jia Yu, and happy birthday to Watson Tio for Office of Biosafety. Your birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday! Hope you have a great day. Hey, I also graduated from. Uh, uh, UCL, yes, from Goldsmiths University. Hello, hello, fellow, fellow alumni. <laughs> uh, Mila says, uh, uh, send love, love, Korean love uh, to my boyfriend Heikel, who is busy playing PS4 all day. Hey, Heikel, no need to work, huh? Huh? Or you busted, you actually need to work, but you're playing PS4. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hope we get to go on a proper date soon once uh, COVID-19 is gone. Going out to you, Heikel from Mila with lots of love. What else do we have? Oh, this one. Oh, no. It's from Michael. It says, hi, yes. I just graduated um, from Southern Cross University in Australia yesterday. Happy but sad day because the graduation was done via Zoom. Wishing everyone, my family and friends, the best of health and, of course, to stay at home safe. Oh, Michael, I know it's not quite the same when you're graduating and you're doing it via Zoom because you don't do that walk, you don't put on your gown, you don't... It's that whole process of receiving it. But instead of focusing on what you can't do, these are very unique times. How about thinking of it as... You have your graduation in the most unique way ever. Never has it been done before in this way. And you're one of the few. And who knows? After this whole thing is over, maybe they can redo the whole graduation ceremony. Or you can enact it in your home. Get your mom and dad to dress up and do it all over again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, idea, idea. Well, thank you for all your messages. And um, that's it for our greetings. Hello from the other side. Okay, it's time for some trivia. I want you to know. Yazzie's bet you didn't know. It's all about the chef's hat. Have you seen chefs when they wear hats? This is like this tall white hat 
And usually he's got a lot of folds. I think we have a picture to show you. Check it out, check it out. There you go. Look at him. He looks so good. Like, ha ha, I'm a chef. Now, the folds of the chef hat, which by the way is called um, toque. Yes, toque. It's a French word for hat. So supposedly it needs to be a hundred folds, 100 folds. And that number is for a good reason. So in the 1800s, the toque, uh, the toque blanche, which means white hat, was a very common sight in the kitchen because white symbolizes purity and cleanliness. And the hundred pleats also represent something. You see, if a chef is any good, they need to have a lot of different recipes for like eggs or uh, even chicken or whatnot. And each fold represents one recipe. So when you have a hundred folds, it means you are a master chef. I want you to know. Yazzie's bet you didn't know. Trivia for you. Okay, we're going to go on air. I'm going to tell you about Jason Mraz. I want you to have it all. Bit of Jason Mraz, Mr. A to Z with Have It All right here on Class 95, Singapore's number one English radio station. So that's from his latest album, which is also called Have It All. And Jason shares what the album is inspired by. The album is a collection of love letters that I wrote to my wife. To make an album, I probably write at least 100 songs. For this one, it was particularly hard. It was about 120. 130 songs and that's because we have felt some tremendous changes on the planet especially in the United States over the last three years and I struggled with what I was going to create so I had to write a lot of different songs about a lot of different emotions and in the end what I felt was the most timeless and classic was the love that I share with my wife and that's really what, what's been going on in my life. At least I got married three years ago. So that, that's been on the forefront. So they're all little love letters to my lady. Aww, everybody's going like, oh, now, right? And what would Jason Mraz say to his younger self? Probably everything's going to be okay. You know, I would tell myself that because there's been so many times on the path that I've worried and spent so much time just wasting time in fear. So many different versions of fear. You know, fear about standing on certain stages that I didn't feel worthy of being on or a fear that I would never create again. My manager once told me that, you know, if you're lucky if you get 10 years, that inspired me to just keep my feet on the ground and enjoy the ride. I like that. A good reminder for all of us as well to just stay in the moment and enjoy the moment and enjoy the ride. Music flows, a bit of Lee and Rhymes with Can't Fight the Moonlight right here on Class 95, the best mix of music. Okie dokie, it is time, it is time to round up our... Jazzy's Poll of the Day! How? Can qualify for Kung Fu Master or not? <laughs> No, definitely no. Okay, we're talking about new clothes. Before you wear them, new clothes, do you wash them or do you not wash them? Um, this one from Joanna who says, if you are in the production line, you will know where the materials come from and how it's being stored and packed before it lands on the shelf. So, hint, hint, wink, wink, definitely need to wash new clothes before wearing and it's a must to wash if your skin is sensitive by nature okay maureen says i'm team no need to wash eh? uh yes team wash new clothes before wearing them uh by hand as well also to check if the color runs or not we wear we rarely would just wear it without washing now Jenny, I think it's Jenny, it says, I honestly don't see the point of washing new clothes unless it is those taken off the rack and not white anymore, <laughs> possibly tried by others. If it's one of those news pieces in the bags, then definitely not. Maya says, wash, 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 wash new clothes. It's been touched by too many hands from the day it's made, packed, folded, tried by different people, touched by the cashier. Ha 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 ha. Definitely need to wash your new clothes before wearing them. So Justin apparently has very sensitive skin, so he washes his clothes before wearing them. Vernon and I, we're on the same team. We don't wash the new clothes before wearing them. I like that that new smell, you know? It's like, mmm, and you can put it on. Maybe I'll do a bit of ironing before that, but that's about it. Okay, so which team wins? Team wash new clothes before wearing or team no need to wash new clothes before wearing? Oh, interesting. Guess what? I'm on the losing team again. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, team, wash your clothes before wearing them. Yeah! 
Wash new clothes before wearing them. Yes, so that is the winning team winning 75% of the votes. Yay! I'm on the losing team again. Okay, so that's all we have for you today. And uh, tune in again tomorrow. We've got lots going on tomorrow. And another chance to win the Friday Feast Surprise. Food delivered right to your doorstep to celebrate the weekend. Till then, stay well, stay home, stay safe. Bye! This program is available on demand for free on Me Watch. Tonight on 5.